Welcome to The Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10, motion, and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. Right out of the gate, I'd like to thank all of the new subscribers, commenters, emailers, and tweeters. This is really a small channel of only 12 videos, including this one, and to have over 400 subscribers on YouTube and several hundred more on iTunes is massive. Thank you for the outpouring of support and your attention. I know there are a ton of ways to learn the intricacies of Final Cut Pro 10 on YouTube alone. So your likes and comments are very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In this episode, we'll be talking about three things. White balance, Final Cut Pro 10's built-in match color tool, and using the Color Finale plugin to seamlessly match colors between any number of cameras. If you would like to follow along, I'm providing the very same ProRes LT files for you. Obviously, you'll also need Color Finale, but that's okay because they provide a seven-day free trial for you to play around. You can get the video files here, and Color Finale here. So I assume you paused the video and now you're all caught up. As you can see, we have eight clips here. Four shot on an A7S II and four shot with an iPhone 7 Plus. I dialed in Kelvin values for white balance here to get them as close as possible. To my eyes, these clips here shot at 4,500 degrees Kelvin were as close to real life as possible. Following both, we have an image that is far too cool at 2,500 Kelvin, far too warm at 9,900 Kelvin, and one that is just slightly off at 5,800 degrees Kelvin. I threw in this last one because that seems to be about the threshold for a camera's auto white balance to be completely wrong. If you happen to use auto white balance, which is never recommended, but I understand that sometimes you have to, a camera would never produce results in the 9900 or 2500 Kelvin range. Usually you're off by about a thousand degrees. So that's why we put this one in here in the event that you had to work with something that was auto white balanced. So the first thing we'll do is edit all of our clips down and get them nice and tidy. I am going to select them all, press E on my keyboard, once again select them all, press Control D, then type in 10 seconds so they're all about the same duration, and then Shift Z to fit everything into view. Also to make this interface work a little bit better for us, I'm going to close the media browser and then press Command 7 on my keyboard to bring up scopes. If your scopes don't match mine and you want them to, that is a super easy thing to change. Just right click anywhere in here, and under scope, choose waveform, and under channels, choose RGB parade. This particular view is super useful for seeing the distribution of color throughout your image. So as we scrub over these, you can see that the distribution of red and blue is very different on the incorrectly balanced clips. So the first thing we want to take a look at is using Final Cut's built-in match color functionality and see if we could use it to salvage a clip that is all wrong, like way, way wrong. So the first thing I want to do is select this overly cool clip and then use the enhancements menu, which is this little magic wand right here, to choose match color. At this point, all we have to do is skim to a point on our properly balanced clip, click, and then hit apply match. So as we can clearly see in the scopes and the image itself, this did not help us very much at all. I would honestly say the only way to salvage this clip might be to desaturate it completely and call it a stylistic choice. Let's repeat this process with our too warm clip. So I'm going to select that one, and then instead of using the enhancements menu, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command Option M, skim over to the balance clip, click, and then press Return. Now, if we go back over to that, we can see that this one, again, the scopes look pretty good, but there is still a significant orange and red color cast over this entire image. It almost looks like a sepia filter was added and then maybe dialed back a little bit. If we press Command-6 on the keyboard, bring up the color panel, we might be able to remove some red here, reddish-orange, like that, and then maybe boost some blue, not too much in the midtones and highlights. So again, this isn't great, but if we turn off all of our effects, we could see the before and the after, and this is a much better clip than the original, but still not too good. 
I have a lot of faith that a skilled colorist using a program like DaVinci Resolve might be able to get this clip almost perfectly balanced, but it would require several nodes of color correction to get it there. Finally, we have our slightly off clip at 5800 degrees Kelvin. So I'll click on that, command option M, skim to our balanced clip, click and then press enter. So again, that one looks pretty good. It's still a little warm, but definitely more manageable than either of the other clips we were working with. At this point, I'm going to speed through the same technique with the other set of clips on the A7S, and we'll take a quick look at those results too. So the slightly off clip can definitely be reworked color-wise to make it match up pretty well with the right white balance. You'll have to remove a little bit of the orange and the red there, but it can definitely work. This warm one, again, could probably be tackled by a proper colorist, and this one just does not look great at all. I do not have a lot of confidence that this one could be recovered and used in any meaningful production. So the final thing we'll do here is a practical application, and that is matching colors between two properly balanced but different cameras. So what I'd like to do is first delete the clips that were improperly colored, which leaves us with these two, both balanced to 4,500 degrees Kelvin. Now, as we skim over these clips, we can see that there's a different angle to factor in, but also a marked difference in color. Even though the white balances were set identically, each one of these cameras and their respective lens interpret and process color in different ways. This is why it's important to have a good grasp of color correction, so you can help mitigate even a few of these small differences in equipment and create a cohesive look regardless of what cameras or lenses you might be using. I'll go out on a limb and say we want our A7S as the A cam in this scenario and have the iPhone try to match up with that. So I'm going to select the iPhone footage, press Command Option M, skim to a part of the A7S footage, click and press Enter. So it looks to me like the saturation on the iPhone clip was lowered slightly and a little more blue was added to cool things off. Where you can really see this is if you choose to toggle match color on and off with the iPhone footage. That's pretty drastically different. So match color is a pretty decent tool to get two separate cameras that are already pretty close in all other settings on the same page with color. It can also help if the white balance was just slightly off, but won't work so great if you've totally botched a white balance setting. It's just not going to happen with the match color tool. So particularly astute viewers probably noticed that in addition to Spider-Man and the Black Widow Lone Survivor, we are also shooting a color checker chart from X-Rite. These handy little tools not only allow you to set proper exposure by giving you white, middle gray, and black values, but also allow for extremely accurate and uniform white balance to be obtained in post-production, regardless of camera sensor or lenses used. Like we talked about earlier, even if you were using three of the exact same camera body on a shoot, but each one had a lens from a different manufacturer mounted on it, the resulting colors of each clip you shot would vary. Using a color checker like this, usually positioned near the subject or where your lights are pointing, is a surefire way to get all of your cameras at a common starting point. So the software we're going to use to accomplish this is a plugin called Color Finale, which I hope you have if you're following along. What I'm going to do is toggle open my media browser, go to the Color Finale project that I have here, and for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use the A7S footage here for time. Once again, I'll close the media browser to give us a better view of our scopes here, and let's get started. The first clip I want to start with is actually the one that's already properly white balanced. The reason for this is pretty simple. Even though I know I chose the right white balance based on the lighting I used, the image itself is still beholden to the color profile of the lens as well as how the camera sensor captured and processed what it was seeing. By using this color chart technique on a properly balanced image, I will get the most accurate image possible. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to press Command-5 on my keyboard to open the effects pane. And right here I have Color Finale, so all I'm going to do is drag this over onto the clip. At this point, go up into the inspector and under Color Finale, choose Open Controls. In the window that appears, you'll have the option to choose Color Wheels, Curves, a LUT Utility, and Six Vector. 
We're going to skip all of those very useful tools and go to the cog on the right side. Under this, we want to check the box that says Display Chart Grid. Now, seemingly nothing happened except for the image getting a little darker. Actually, it's waiting for you to draw a bounding box around the color chart itself. So starting at the top left and going clockwise, click in each corner to draw a rectangle. After that's done, you want to adjust each corner if necessary to make sure that every circle is fully covering its corresponding color. These look pretty good, but again, you could just click and drag like this to get things perfect. You want to make sure that none of the circles overlap with any of these cross sections right here. Once that's done, just go right here and press Match. Then you can close Color Finale. Now this image is far less saturated than the original clip. Just to double check that, I'm going to turn Color Finale off and then back on. And I now know based on the chart color transform that this is the most accurate representation of how it actually looked. It's much more muted, and I actually prefer this image over the original. But now that we have this as our baseline, we can go ahead and try to correct the other clips to see how close we get to this. So let's start with this 2500 Kelvin clip again, which was pretty much unsalvageable using match color. I'm going to drag color finale over once again, open controls, Go to the cog, and then choose Display Chart Grid. I will draw my grid again, and adjust it a little bit just to make sure everything is in the right spot, and then click Match. Now, as you can see, this is drastically improved over the original image and far better than the built-in color match tool. Unfortunately though, this is about as good as we'll be able to get this image. If you look at some of the finer white lines here on the letters maybe, or right here along the ruler, you could see that they are pink, purple, somewhere in that area. Again, an expert colorist might be able to isolate and desaturate those parts of the image, but that certainly feels like a job for DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look at this overly warm image and see what we can do here. So again, I'll select it, color finale, Open controls, cog, display chart grid. As you can see, this image has been almost fully restored to something I'd be absolutely comfortable using in a production. I'd probably make a few adjustments to the exposure now, but this is an incredible improvement over the original clip. If we mouse over and look at the difference there, there's only a little bit of difference with the warmth, and that is incredible considering what this used to look like, which is that. Really, really cool stuff. Finally, let's try it on the clip that's only slightly off, and I imagine that this will go really well. Double click Color Finale, Open Controls, Cog, Display Chart, click. So if we compare this one now with the original, you could see that there is very little variance here. This one, the original, is a little bit warmer, but beyond that, you could easily cut between these two clips with very little problem at all. And now for the real test. This would be color matching an A7S to an iPhone. So I will go ahead and remove these clips, keep our well-balanced one, open the media browser, drop down our well-balanced iPhone clip, I will set that to be 10 seconds, close the media browser, and all we want to do here is the same exact thing. So we're going to add color finale, open the controls, go to the cog, display our color chart, and draw. Now this is a pretty amazing transformation right here. Given that it's a phone camera and you'd very rarely grade this sort of thing, we've gone from an overly saturated image with a greenish tint to almost being able to match an A7S. I would have no problem 
putting these clips in the same timeline and cutting back and forth between them. We could see that the iPhone doesn't hold highlights as well right in this area right here as say the A7S does, but given the proper time to set up and expose, this could be a very, very capable B cam. The final thing we also learned today was that if you have to err on one white balance, definitely go warmer because it is nearly impossible to fix footage that is overly cool. The more you know. Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find and join our ranks. If you have any questions or an idea of something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. I will see you all in the next episode. Make something epic.